Get ready. You're listening to Give God 90 live. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Give God 90. We are live on Thursday night. Um, I say we. I'm here. My name is Jerry Mitchell. And sitting next to me is the surviving Myra. Yes. <laughs> surviving. Um, if you, For those of you who don't know or didn't know. Hey, Hi, Sean. Sean. Uh, Myra had, she suffers from diverticulosis and when it acts up and she has problems, it becomes diverticulitis. Yes. And that is what she's been dealing with for the last six days. You've lost what, like seven or eight pounds in the last six days because you don't eat when that happens. It's just not, not that good. Now I know the, the folks on Spreaker can't see you, so they don't really know that you don't look as full and rich and beautiful as you usually do. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's just the way it is. Um, it, if you could see, you notice a difference. Trust me. Um, you are currently taking medication, seeing a medical doctor, and for preventive maintenance, you're actually seeing an herbalist. Yes. Who, and it's been two years since you've had one of these nasty little two years three flare-ups. months and x amount of days <laughs> so um that actually helps so folks if you're wondering about um how should i how, i wasn't going to go down this road but i'm going to go down this road for a minute go down this road if you're wondering if following the instructions you get in the bible work they do because God tells you, you know, if you want a good, uh, healthy, working body, mm-hmm. there's certain things you put into it and there's certain things you don't put into it, right? Right. And, you know, even though the things you shouldn't put into it will kind of keep you going for a while, it ain't the best thing for you. No. So what, what you know, we do is, is we can't say we eat kosher because that's extra biblical. Right. But what we do eat is what the Bible says no. is okay to eat. Right. Uh-huh. We avoid the things it says don't eat. Right. It's kind of like putting uh, gas or diesel in your car. Mm-hmm. You know, if you put good fuel in, you get good results from your vehicle. If you put bad fuel in, you get bad results from your vehicle. Right. If you put water in, nothing happens. Because it doesn't go anywhere. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it just stops. So, but in my body, <clears throat> lots of water is very important to keep me going. Yep. Hi, Tina. Glad to see you're joining us Hi, tonight Tina. on Facebook. Um, but that's just the Hi, way Carol, it is. Hi, Carol. If you're with Tina, <laughs> <laughs> that's just the way it is. So you've had that going on. Uh, you know, it's been a it's been kind of a weird week for us since the last time we were here on Thursday. Um. Very good friend of ours passed away. His services are tomorrow. Uh, very good, uh, old, old, old veteran. He started in Korea uh, in the Navy, and I can't remember if he was just a chief petty officer or master chief. I don't remember exactly what his final ranking was, but he was just an old, old service guy. Oh, J two, cool. Hi, J. Um, just a really old, cool guy, and uh, a lot of things going on there. Um, also, want to mention we had a wonderful visit today from 
from what's that? Oh, you can't see. It's from Sean. It says he's praying for you. Oh, thank you, Sean. Um, from actually Sean, who's watching, and Colleen, his lovely wife. They stop by for a visit, and it's kind of a sad visit in a way, but it's kind of a happy visit in a way because they're moving. Right. Just a few hours away. And I say a few hours away, like seven or eight, right? I think it's, it's seven or eight hours from here. Eight to nine. Eight to nine, whatever it is. It's a day's drive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can't just load up and go uh, take pictures with Sean. And, Anymore. you know, it's got to be it's got to be a planned thing and it takes a little more planning. So we, you know, but we're probably going to see if we can't make that work. Maybe, I hope. But it's a happy thing for them. It's sad for us that they're moving, but it's mm -hmm. happy for them because they're going to go do something that they've been wanting to do. Um, Sean, basically, uh, has more letters behind his name than a can of alphabet soup. Nine hours. Okay, thanks, Sean. <laughs> thanks, sir. Um, and he's written a couple of books now. He's got one that's getting ready to come out. Mm -hmm. And I've got to say... I was well. You were privileged enough to get it too, but I just as it got as, far as it as goes you through did. editing, <laughs> we've been reading this book. Very, very good book, and it's mm -hmm. really, uh, folks. When it comes out, once it's published, you need to get it. Yes, we will be letting you know what it is. Um, <laughs> and how to Sean find is, it. is in a very special place where he can write this book. He's read through the Bible. Mm -hmm. I think he said thirty-four times now, and this is his view of what each book says in 250 words or less. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some extracurricular stuff in there too, free of charge once you get the book, but it's there. And it comes along for the ride and he does a really good job in portraying a lot of things the way he grew up and, and some understanding that he has really, really profound stuff in there. And uh, Yes, it is. Maybe I should tell him why it's unique, because I know all of the people that listen to him know what's going on with him. Can we tell Sean? I'm going to tell Sean, because you <laughs> said it yourself. It's been out there. Um, Sean was in a uh, what was basically a fatal car crash a, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, they pronounced him dead at the scene. Mm -hmm. He wasn't, thankfully. He opened his eyes, and somebody noticed it and they actually gave him some life-saving techniques and cut him out of the car uh he ha had a head-on collision he went from i think 55 miles an hour to zero in seven feet mm -hmm. uh, it left him uh severely uh damaged he's got some things thanks sean I'm you know i'm going to do this anyway um he has traumatic brain injury um but he also left him with um I'm going to ruin the name of this condition. He'll but it, tell us. It's Hold a terminal, on a It's a terminal <laughs> disease that acts a lot like ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. It, it basically begins to shut down different functions in his body at different times. So as he's reading through the Bible this 34th time, and he knows that he's terminal, and, and now he's going through this how am I going to express what I'm saying to people? And that's what this book is. It, uh, MSAC, yes, cerebellum. Um, multiple system atrophy, atrophy cerebellum. cerebellum. Got it. Thanks. <laughs> so as he's dealing with this, he's reading through the Bible, and he says, well, maybe if I say something, somebody can benefit from it. Right. And that's what this book is really all about. And folks, when it comes out... Uh, trust me, we'll let you know when it comes out, and uh, you can get a copy and and hopefully enjoy it as much as I, I have not gotten through the whole thing yet. I've gotten up to, I think I have completed the Book of Matthew now. So there's stuff in there you got to read. It's it's really 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 uh, amazing the things he does. Um. For all our new folks that are listening, we appreciate you and really enjoy you joining us. Have I, no, I haven't quite got all the housekeeping done yet for all mm -hmm. the new folks. Don't forget you can download the Give God 90 app. It is free for your Apple or Android device, and it lets you download these uh, episodes if you're on Spreaker. All right. um, you can go back, search through the archives, do all kinds of fun things with them. 
Um, it, it really is a way to, to put you in control of how you listen to this. Because if you download it, you know, you can go down the road and plug it into your car or you can plug it into your headphones if you're out jogging and, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. You can listen to it later. That's why uh, on Mondays I do a little bit more in-depth uh, teaching or, or whatever you want to call what I do. Um, and and I, I do that specifically on Spreaker because the folks who like us on Facebook like a little bit of a lighter fare kind of a thing you know it's they don't want the in-depth deep detailed you know well this word in hebrew means this and this word in greek means that even though i get into that a little bit from time to time they like the the fluffy stuff sometimes and fluffy's good every once mm -hmm. in a while you, you got to have the meat I mean, with unless, the milk unless you're a real deep 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 yeah. deep deep deep, 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 deep yeah. you, you've got to you've got to have the meat with the milk though you know yes. let's, let's be realistic which is why I want to talk about what I want to talk about tonight. Because time-wise, when, when we're sitting here on, on this Thursday evening, live on Spreaker and on Facebook, we are just getting through Yom Kippur, mm -hmm. Day of Covering, Day of Atonement, however you want to say that. Um, and a lot of our Christian listeners might not understand why this is important. They're going to say, well, that's just one of those Jewish things. Well, when you dig into that a little bit, hopefully you're going to read Leviticus 23 and you're going to find out that's not just one of those Jewish things. It's nowhere, should I, I should say, nowhere in Scripture does God ever relinquish ownership of the days that He chooses that's right. to anyone else. That's right. The, uh, Paul writes later on that, that the Jews were entrusted with the words of God, depending on which translation you read. Sometimes yes. it says oracles, sometimes it says words means the same thing. They were given the the job of making sure it stayed intact. And they did a really good job of that over the years. Uh, more and more Christians are realizing the importance of these holidays, I should say holy days, and they're saying, what's this all mean? How's it come together? Right. We are not the first generation to do that. No. It's been going on for a long, long time. And a man named James Usher a long time ago, and you, um, per, well, it's pronounced Usher, but it's spelled U-S-S-H-E-R. Mm -hmm. One of those weird British things, okay? You'll see why in a moment. Um, Usher was the uh, archbishop and something else in Ireland, Okay in the 17th century. His book, called Annals of the World, and for you Facebook folks, there it is. <laughs> it's big, okay? And the font's small, so... This is his kind of reading. <laughs> very technical, very, very um, interesting, though. Trust me, it's interesting. It was actually published two years after he died, in uh, 1858. I'm sorry, 1658, 17th century, 1658. And what he did was he sat down and he started studying. And he said, I'm going to find out when all this started. Can you imagine? Now, in 1658, they didn't have computers. They didn't have um, ways to really research things very quickly. So what he had to do was he had to sit down and calculate on paper. And what he was looking for was when God spoke creation into existence. He said, there's a date. I know I can find it. All I have to do is backtrack everything we have in the Bible. I know it's a clue. I know it points us to this. I know what's going on. And so he starts backtracking. And it's really interesting that, that his book begins, in the beginning, God creating the heavens and the earth. Does that sound familiar? It does. Okay, I'm glad that sounds familiar. <laughs> um, and 
the beginning of time. This this just kind of this cracks me up because here's this guy, four hundred years ago now, right? Mm -hmm. And he says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The beginning of time, according to our chronology. Now, what he's saying is, time as we understand it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Happened at the start of the evening. Here's where... Evening. Evening. Mm -hmm. Okay? Preceding, so just before... What we now call the 23rd day of October from the Julian calendar. This is how specific he gets. But he needs to be this specific in order to, I don't want to say convince people he's right, but he wants to take all of the argument out of, of what they might come back with. Okay? Okay. And that would have been in the year 4004 B.C., or 710, according to the Julian uh, calendar. This was the first Sunday, this is important here, the first Sunday past the autumnal equinox for that year. And it would have been September 21 on the Gregorian calendar. See, he gets really specific. He not only gives us a year, he gives us a day, and he gives us a day of the week. Why is it important that he gives us a day of the week? Why? Because if it was the first Sunday, the first day of the week, he begins his six days of creation. When's his Sabbath day? Ooh. Ooh. I got a lot of Christian listeners out there oh. who are going to be going, wait a minute, wait a minute, what are you talking, why are you trying to tell us? This guy is the Archbishop of Ireland who's saying this. He's, he's actually agreeing with many of the church followers before Eusebius. He's agreeing with all of the, the early church fathers, including Moses, right? Mm -hmm. He's saying everything that the Bible says lines up. Everything that we read in the Bible, you can count on because we have done the calculations as as best we can uh, in 1650s, right? And here's where we are. Later, other people would come by, and they would calculate the thing out. And even today, they're calculating this thing out, and guess where they're putting the beginning of creation? Where? Within about a year or two of Usher but always in the fall of the year. Always in the fall of the year. This actually follows with many, many things. There's traditions throughout the Middle Eastern countries other than Israel who begin their year in the fall. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Could it be because they all, even though after the, the Tower of Babel, that they all understood when things happened? Mm-hmm. Because God did it, right? Right. If you go to any country, it doesn't matter what country you go to, what language they speak. If you point up in the sky and you say, what's that? And you ask for a constellation, they're going to tell you what particular constellation it is. And it's always going to mean the same thing. It's not always going to be uh, Virgo or it's not, you know, whatever the, the Spanish word for Virgo would be, would be what they use in Spanish speaking countries. If you go to Asia, whatever Asia calls it, that's going to be, they're going to know it's, it's Virgo because God named the constellations. Mm -hmm. It remained the same. It all remained the same even after the confusion of the languages at the Tower of Babel after Nimrod. So what we see through this is there's consistency in chronology. Did you follow what I just said? Kind of, yeah. Kind of? Okay. <laughs> the chronology from creation has been consistent. We can change calendars, but there's something that's never changed, and that is the order of days. The order of days never changed. Even during Noah's flood, those order of days never, ever changed. So when we're looking through these things and we see these things, you know, we can argue about some of the details, 
but there's other details that are simply consistent through chronology. Some people might say, why is this important? And I'm glad you asked. See, I didn't wait for you to see it. <laughs> this is important because when we start looking at history, we, if we know that something's consistent, we can follow it through. When we start looking at prophecy and we know that history is consistent in certain things, then we can follow that out as well. The fall feasts are no different. The feasts that, that God lays out in um, Leviticus chapter 23 are absolutely no different. They're, ab they're, they're really quite fascinating. They have history. Mm -hmm. They have present meaning. Mm -hmm. They have future meaning. Right. A lot of people get hung up on the future meaning. A lot of people get hung up on the future meaning. You know, eschatology is fun, but until something really happens and you can say, here's what we're pointing at, mm -hmm. you're, it's all guesswork. Right. History is consistent. We know, looking back, that if we look at the first day of the seventh month when all this took place, then we can follow the six days of creation. You know, we can follow those those days up through the fall, not the fall of the year, but the fall of humanity, uh, Adam and Eve's chewing on the fruit, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we have our own little inside joke on that too. Um, <laughs> and then we can follow that through the Day of Atonement, the Day of Covering, when it is absolutely possible... I'm not saying this is exactly when it happened, but it is absolutely possible that what we consider the Day of Atonement could have very well been the day that the Almighty killed the two goats to clothe Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. so therefore, setting in motion the consistent day of covering and both the covering consistent and chronology. Mm -hmm. Then you have that time between Yom Kippur, the Day of Covering, and the first day of Sukkot, the day of, of uh, boo, or Feast of Booze or Tabernacles, however you want to call it. That period of time is a time of reflection. When you look back and you go, ooh, what, you know, here's where we've gotten to, what do we do now? As you kind of wander around until you get to that next day. But, the, but Sukkot is something special. Sukkot is the only feast where you're commanded to be happy. Mm -hmm. says, look, you've got to be happy about this. you got to be happy that I'm sending you out to live in these temporary dwellings. Mm -hmm. You've got to be happy that I'm sending you out to go camping. You've got to be happy that I'm sending you out to do this. You know, I don't know of any other uh, religion in the world that says, here's something you've got to be happy about. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people, you know, they contrive Christmas and they're like, oh, we're, we're so happy about Christmas. But you're not told to be happy. Right. This tells you to be this happy. This tells you to be happy. Okay. This tells you how you're supposed to celebrate. It says, look, go out and live. Interact with other people. Visit, you know, the people around you. And it's such a point that you were supposed to actually weave in the roof of your temporary dwelling uh, actual leaves and branches from the farthest point north of Israel, the farthest point south of Israel, and east and west. So you, you had to take these things and trade with people. Mm -hmm. From those other from areas. From those other areas. You weren't allowed to go sit in your own little corner of the world and be all by your lonesome self. Mm -hmm. You had to get out and interact with people. You had to actually talk to people. Right. You had you had Not things to do. Them. Not text them. You, you to talk, to, talk them. to them. <laughs> you had to trade with them. You had to, you know, be a people. Mm -hmm. A person. A person. Oh, oh no! Oh, 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 that reminds me. What? What we talked about last week. Don't okay. let me forget where I was just now. But what we talked about last okay. week. Uh, about language, about uh, the evolution of language, mm -hmm. and how we're we're changing uh, the word like gender and the word uh, person. I actually got a message this week, and the question was, 
is there anything that's going on right now that we need to be aware of? And the answer is absolutely yes. And the word you need to be very aware of right now is migration. Uh, that they are actually changing the vocabulary for immigration and they want to start using the word migration where migration, uh, if you look in the, the current, well, recent dictionaries, I should say, is going to tell you uh, that migration is something where where animals or people will move from point A to point B and then back. Okay, What they're talking about now is migration and in U the European countries, open migration, which means people can come from point A to point B and stay with no questions asked. So, yes, there is that going on. Be very aware of your mm -hmm. vocabulary and how people are using that. Back to trading with people. Um, you didn't have the opportunity to sit and be lonesome. Right. You didn't have the opportunity to... Uh, how, how do I want to be a wallflower at the dance? I guess is a good way to say it, right? You had right. to get out and, and, and interact. God didn't design us to be alone. To be alone. In fact, what is it that he said about Adam? It's not good for man to be alone. Oh. And he made Eve. So, everything that he does builds on something that he said at some point. Right. A lot of people this year, well, I should say a lot, a growing number of people are celebrating the fall feast, and I really enjoy seeing that. Um, mm -hmm. they, they are really trying to gather these understandings. I would caution some of them not to get hung up in the traditions. Right. Uh, some of those traditions can be edifying. They can mm -hmm. be good. They can be fun. They can be fun. Some of them just kind of are annoying and get in the way. So beware of that. And you know what? If you're going to begin celebrating the feast, what we commonly call the Feast of the Lord, Sukkot's a good time to do it. Oh, it is. Because it is absolutely... It will get you on fire it's, for it's all It's the of most them. fun. <laughs> uh, the next one's actually not in Leviticus. Right. But Hanukkah is a really good celebration, too. Um, it actually comes from a couple of hundred years prior to Jesus, prior to Yeshua, where the Greeks had invaded and the Maccabees stood up and said, oh, no, you're not. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you're not. Judas Maccabee said, ain't happening on my watch. Mm -hmm. Fascinating story. And even Hanukkah has some special meaning. So if you're going to start celebrating either Sukkot or Hanukkah, because Hanukkah is based on Sukkot. They had right. just gotten done celebrating Sukkot. Right. They're like, hey, let's just have another one. Right. Why not? Um, it, it was uh, Ben Casuto who used to say, you know what, all of these things, they tried to kill us. It didn't, didn't work. work. Let's, let's eat. Let's eat. <laughs> so enjoy, mm -hmm. enjoy the fall feast. Enjoy learning about them. Enjoy observing them. And really, once you start down that path, you're going to find out that the benefits you get from that are far and above what you typically are going to get from some of the other holidays you might be already celebrating. Mm -hmm. That's really all I'm going to say about that for a change. I'm not, for, I'm the, not, for this session. For this session. I'm, <laughs> I'm, not going, I'm not going to bash on Halloween right now. You did it. <laughs> Um, I will, I, I will say Halloween is one of the few mm -hmm. holidays that the Western Christian church helped to establish. Right. Look it up. Mm -hmm. Look it up. Don't trust Wikipedia on it, but look it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look in your church encyclopedia or the Christian encyclopedia, whichever one it is. It will tell you all about Halloween. Don't be afraid to study. I don't know how many times like I've said that. I don't know how many times I, over and over and over I say this. Don't be afraid of what you're going to find. I tell people all the time, I don't want to shift 
your focus from your Creator. But what I want to do is keep you focused on the Creator while you move just a little bit to see a little bit more of Him. Mm -hmm. Who He is, what He is, and how He is trying to work in your life. If I can do that and convince you to follow His instructions, I've got it made. You're right, Tina. It is sad what they've done. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, for tonight, I am going to cut this about time-wise. We're about right for 30 minutes. So, and give you a chance to, to go back and yes. sit in a relaxing position because mm -hmm. you're starting to get Ancy. tense. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this yes, evening. We appreciate you. everything you've done for us and continue to do for us. Appreciate your prayers, your best wishes, all those good things. Yes, we do. Um, I want to say safe travels to Sean and Colleen as they yes. head to their new adventure Definitely. and uh yes really 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 well, thanks everybody thank you everyone have a most blessed week yes man did you see the likes and hearts went up right at the end yep that's cool mm -hmm.